What's up, Coaster community? My name is Man, back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the B&M Floorless Coasters, and there's 16 of them in total, and today I'm going to be ranking all of them, in my opinion, just a prediction for the most part. I haven't ridden uh, a bunch of these. There's some I've ridden, but I haven't ridden a lot of these. So anyways, let's get started. Number 16 is Firebird at Six Flags America. Totally the best uh, Six Flag Six Flags park in the world, for sure. And it was previously Apocalypse, so it used to be a stand-up. It was a floorless conversion, and before that was the uh, first B&M coaster at uh, Six Flags. And it was located at Six Flags Great America as Iron Wolf. It was built in 1990, and I've just heard this ride's rough, and it just does nothing, so I'm going to put it dead last for now. Number 15 is Patriot, another floorless conversion from a stand-up. And this is very similar to Firebird, just it, it looks a bit smoother, but it still does nothing, so I'm just going to put it at 15 for now. Number 14 is Daemonin at Tivoli Gardens, the same park as Rouge Benand, or that wood coaster, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, it's, it's classic woody, but it's apparently uh, great, and an also playing on a stick, which is the best flat ride in the world. So they definitely got a great ride collection, and uh, they got Daemonin to add to that, but... This is just a very short B&M floorless in height and length. Only has a loop, dive loop, zero-g roll, but I think it's smoother than the previously mentioned floorless coasters and has the zero-g roll, which uh, might provide some whip too, so that's why it's 14. Number 13 is Insane Speed, or apparently Bright Insane Speeding Car to uh, Taiwan people, apparently, but anyways, this is at a park in Taiwan that I'm not going to try to pronounce, <laughs> but they do have another coaster uh, by B&M. A diving Machine G5. It's a B&M dive, and it's apparently a like clone or mirror image of Oblivion at Alton Towers. But they also got this B&M Floorless, which is a bit larger than the uh, other ones before this. Uh, it's still kind of short, though. But it does have loop, uh, dive loop, and interlocking course goons. It just looks more intense than them in general, so I'm just going to settle on the 13 spot for now. Number 12 is one I've ridden, Batman the Dark Knight, and this does absolutely nothing. It has a loop, dive loop, zero-g roll, and two interlocking corkscrews, or just interlocking corkscrews, whatever whatever you want to call it. Uh, anyways, but uh, it really doesn't do anything, but it does have some whip on the zero-g roll and the interlocking corkscrews. And just this park has no filler rides at all. Uh, you, you know, you have Superman the Ride and Wicked Cyclone, but other than that, what do you have? Two boomerangs sitting next to each other. Uh, yeah, the, just, this park needs to get uh, some other rides. And uh, this B&M really doesn't help them at all, as it does pretty much nothing. And another B&M floorless coaster, like this whole list, uh, is, is Hot Wheels Nitro, which is uh, not the trashy Nitro at a Great Adventure. No, this is the Nitro India theme to Hot Wheels. Uh, cool, cool. So, it, it also has, uh, very similar to uh, Batman the Dark Knight, but it's uh, just a bit bigger. And it doesn't have a pre-drop, so there might be some nice sustained air time in the back. And it's got this uh, cool-looking turn on the drop, too, so I'm just going to put it ahead of it for now. Number 10 is Rougarou, and I've ridden this as well. It's also a stand-up conversion of, or floorless conversion, whatever you want to call it, of Mantis. And it's got a uh, kind of drawn-out first half, so nice sustained intensity, but the second half really doesn't do anything. So it is a bit uh, taller, longer, but... I you know, it just didn't really do that much for me in general, so. Anyways, number nine is Scream at Six Flags Magic Mountain, the park that has way too many coasters, and they just seem to not really care about this coaster too much. It's sitting in a parking lot, uh, and it's I've heard it's very rough, has a really bad B&M rattle, and it does have a great layout. I think uh, this layout's great. It's a mirror image of Bizarro, which I'll talk about that coaster later, but just the, I think the roughness is gonna, uh, gonna hold it back if, uh, that exists, so I'm uh, kind of skeptical about putting it higher than number nine. Number eight is Hair Razor at Ocean Park in Hong Kong, and you get some great views of the Pacific Ocean while on this coaster. And the layout uh, doesn't uh, doesn't disappoint either. Uh, you have these two awesome airtime moments: the Speed Hill and this Twisted Airtime Mill. Dare I say they are better than uh, airtime moments on Beanham Hypers? I know you can. You can hate on me in the uh, comments for that, but uh, got some great airtime moments and got some nice inversions, four inversions. Uh, it's very short, and I've heard it has a really bad rattle, but even if it has a rattle, this layout uh, is still going to propel this ride up in the top 10 floorlesses for me. Number seven is Hydra 
and this ride uh, stands in Hercules location. You know, definitely killed that rough, boring wood coaster, and I'm glad it's here, and I'm going to ride it this year. Super excited, because this ride just looks super messed up with the uh, JoJo roll and the inclined Cobra roll and these uh, weird misshapen zero-g rolls and corkscrews and all these weird inversions that look like they provide some uh, hang time, but I just don't know how this good this ride is. Like, I just don't see any of the intensity or a whip on this ride, so I don't really want to put it higher than 7 for now. Number 6 is Dominator, another ride I will be riding uh, this year at King's Dominion, and it was previously at Giaga Lake, and it's the longest B&M floor list, but it doesn't really do that much with, with, with its layout. It kind of meanders around the second half, but the first half has some nice sustained moments like the loop and the nice fast base turn, so that's going to uh, make this ride good. In my opinion, just speculation again, but I just don't know about the second half, and I don't know uh, really sh if I should put this ride any higher. Number five is Medusa at Six Legs of Discovery Kingdom, which is now the only Medusa, as the Woody in six, at Six Legs Mexico was converted, and the other one at uh, Great Adventure, the other floorless, was switched to, uh, to Bizarro. But anyways, it's got uh, some wonky inversions, just like Hydra. Uh, definitely not as weird, but... Uh, it's got a sea serpent roll and corkscrews that are not interlocking, and this is just a very typical uh, large bean on floorless coaster, so I'm just going to rank it in the middle of them for now, but you know, you can expect all the whip and intensity and stuff like that. Number four is Kraken, another bean on floorless I've ridden, and this has great moments. It has a bit of a rattle. I did get a head headache after two rides, but it really wasn't that bad, and you know, you got some uh, nice intense and some nice... Uh, Whippy moments too. Uh, the ending, uh, I'm kind of sad it doesn't have the other interlocking course screw, but the vertical loop is very intense. Definitely not surprising that. You know, you got uh, in all the trenches and the uh, Kraken's lair and stuff like that. But I just think this ride's overrated and the forces weren't as high or as strong as I uh, thought they were going to be. But a ride that I cannot say the same about is Bizarro. And I know you guys might get mad at me, but I'm pretty sure Bizarro himself is pretty happy with this opinion. And this ride definitely uh, delivered in the uh, forces. The vertical loop was uh, very intense, a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be, as well as the dive loop. And the zero-g roll was a lot more whippy. And even the corkscrews at the end, very fast pace, all those turns. And uh, just the pacing definitely su uh, surprised me. It does have a mid-course, though. And this ride's very long. It is the prototype, uh, being on floorless, but it's still one of the best. And the thing I hate about this coaster is... Uh, they stacked really bad. I had to wait like 30 minutes on this ride both uh, times there. That was pretty bad stacking there. But uh, anyways, that just makes it the longest being on floorless duration, 30 minutes. Uh, anyways, uh, but it is really smooth, silky smooth, unlike Scream, which definitely uh, makes it a great ride well, and the intensity too. So I'm just going to have it at the number three for now. Definitely a very underrated ride. Number two is Superman Krypton Coaster, uh, Bizarro's rival, I guess. But anyways, uh, this ride, uh, it's the tallest B&M Floorless, and they were going to have a dive loop, but they removed it to make this very tall vertical loop, which might provide some great hang time. And it does have the, those dumb uh, helixes on the quarry wall, but the rest of this uh, very long coaster, and has uh, all the great things from the larger B&M Floorless coasters. Number one is Superman La Attraction de Acero, or for us Americans, Superman Ride of Steel. And this is a just like the larger bean on floorless coasters, but it has some nice quirks. Uh, great uh, sustained airtime held during the middle of the ride. No mid-course, so great pacing, and all these elements are taken at a lot faster speed, which makes them better. And the, there's a pre-drop, and it's kind of very similar to Raging Bull's first drop. You're probably going to get some flow ejector maybe even ejector, so I just think uh, this is definitely the best being on floorless just because of just how it runs and some of the weird aspects in general. Anyways, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Comment below, what are your favorite being on floorless coasters? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give, give it a like. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody.